Hey everybody, this is DJ Rude again, and uh, I just finished up a video about karaoke, and uh, and I touched on that video a little bit about microphones, uh, two particular microphones that I, I find uh, good for uh, you know medium to high level uh, enthusiasts, uh, singers and professional singers, of course. Um, I don't consider myself to be a professional singer. Um, I think I'm pretty good, but I don't. You know, I don't put myself up there. Uh, I would definitely wouldn't make it on American Idol. There's just too many good people out there. But I do it for fun. Uh, I enjoy it, and, uh, and it's a way that you can make a living um, if you're in the right market. And uh, now these microphones here are very expensive, very high quality, and definitely will survive, you know, shock and beating uh, by your customers. Um, for the most part, I would reserve using them only for your best customers because once you start doing uh, lots of karaoke gigs, and some of you, you know, know exactly what I'm talking about, um, you know, you'll have your certain customers that you know that you can trust and count on. You know, I, I've had I've had customers uh, come through and sing a song and then go, "All right, yeah," and slam it on the floor, and it's like, "What the heck is you know?" So, yeah, but you know your customer, so. That's why for the average, regular, everyday customer, I just use uh, a standard, you know, cheapy 1999 Guitar Center microphone, or you can even pick this up at Walmart for, for probably $13.99. And they sound just fine for what they're doing, because, you know, uh, let's be honest, half the people that get up there really don't know what they're doing. So, um, so that aside, we'll put that one back and we'll continue to concentrate on these here. This right here is the old staple. It's the Shure SM58. This is probably the longest running continuously used microphone in musical history. It's been around, now this is something that I heard, I don't know how true it is, that the 58 stands for the year that they came out with it. I don't know how true that is, but I know that it's been around at least 30 years or more. Um, I'm uh, I'm friends with a guy who is the lead singer of the uh, the Tubes. Uh, actually, him and I do business together. And I asked him one day. I said, "So you know, you're a pop singer. You've had a top ten hit, you know, in Europe and in the United States. What microphone do you, did you use then, and what do you use now?" And sure enough, he said the Shure SM58. No pun intended. Sure, sure enough, or maybe it was intended. But anyways. So this thing right here is probably the absolutely longest running, best built microphone there is today. And it's not really that expensive. I, you know, I kind of exaggerated there. It, you know, it, you can get them on sale between 89 bucks and 99 dollars, and they average, you know, up to 119 dollars. So uh, it's a great mic. It's well worth having, and I reserve this only for customers that I can trust that aren't going to slam it on the ground, even though it, it could take it. But I don't you know, feel like going and having a, a little metal part replaced every time somebody decides to slam it. This here, on the other hand, is a professional microphone. Uh, professional singers use this one as well. This one is more of studio quality. It's a Sennheiser E935, E945. It's a great mic. Um, it is super solidly built. You could slam it on the floor, too, and it would take a beating. It's a Sennheiser. This thing is a workhorse, and it has awesome quality. I use this in conjunction with my TC Helicon VoiceWorks Plus um, because I think that it just, you know, it really captures the highs and the mids of your voice, and uh, and it really has a good uh, uh, positive. What is that called? The uh, uh, the P, you know, the <coughs> there's a uh, there's a word for it. Um, a plosive. I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't think of it. Yeah, it, it's really good at guarding against plosives, and uh, you know you do get those a lot when you're you know in the middle of karaoke or, or even singing just regular studio singing in your personal home studio. Uh, so, anyways, and then I also have this here that I use uh, depending on the songs. I like to do some rap songs, and uh, you know, so I get pretty involved in it. I'm like, I like big butts. And I cannot lie. So, anyways, you know, when I'm doing that, you know, that that heavy B uh, can be. And although I don't do it at karaoke with the public, but you know, if I want to record, you know, just for my own personal enjoyment, I will use something like this. This is a plosive guard. It's a Sterling Audio PF1 pop filter. 
It's about $50 at uh, Guitar Center, and uh, this thing is really good because what it is is it's inverted. Uh, so when you know your the pressure of your voice flows into it, it aims it downward and away from the microphone, and it helps guard against plosives. So, anyways, uh, that's just a little added thing. You know, some of your customers uh, may like the idea of using this or not. You know, I'm a pretty no frills guy; I never really bring it. So, uh, but that's just another option that you have. Uh, so, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, the reason I have it here like this is because I use a vocal processor and an environment processor. In other words, uh, I use this one here is for reverbs and uh, I'll do a quick demonstration. If you can hear me, I've got the, uh, the TC Electronic G switch here that controls the different settings. Testing one, two. And here we go, yeah. Yo. Testing one, two, three, four. So with the TC Helicon, with the TC Helicon, you uh, you can change the different types of settings for voice modeling and different types of harmonizations, threes and fives, highs and lows. Uh, and I use this Sennheiser E935 connected to that unit, where my Shure SM58 test one, two. <laughs> Anyways, the, the Shure SM58 is connected to the TC Electronic M350, and that's a, uh, a processor for reverbs. Uh, it has a lot of different environments and backgrounds. So, uh, and I use them together to kind of, you know, to get that particular effect. Because what, even though I sing karaoke and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not copying the artist. Uh, I like to call myself a rendition singer. In other words, I like to sing popular music that's available on karaoke, but I do it my own way. I'm not trying to emulate anybody exactly. Uh, I have a deep voice and I like a, a wide range of music, so I couldn't possibly emulate everyone. And uh, so, anyways, that's why I like to use, you know, this setup here because it'll, it gives me that unique sound that I want. You know, two separate processors, two separate microphones, and uh, you can use it for karaoke or you can use it for, you know, uh, playing along with your keyboards, which I do. And, uh, you know, it, they've got a wide range of uses, you know. Um, it's probably redundant to use in uh, a karaoke situation, but, you know, when you're at home and you're messing around or you're actually a professional serious musician, um, this is, you know, something that you might find interesting. So, anyway, this is DJ Root. And uh, I just thought that I would go over the microphones with you guys. And uh, shout out to DJ Advise, DJ Morrow. By the way, buddy, my name is DJ Rude. You keep calling me DJ Paul. That's my first name. <laughs> no, I'm just playing with you, man. Anyways, uh, so I'll be doing some more uh, videos here in the future regarding karaoke, virtual DJ, Serato, uh, DJing, mixing, and uh, video mixing. So uh, we'll, we're going to try to cover a, a wide range of things. And uh, we'll go from there. But anyways, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in. This is DJ Rude. Peace. Keep spinning.